to me, science is not a debate. It's actually, that's the whole purpose of the scientific method. So debates to me are useless in science. They are, it's either true or it's false through the scientific method. So if we, if we want to sit here and argue all day, we can. I prefer discussion from people that understand what the scientific method is. So that's my first issue. Um, second of all, there are plenty of proofs that can be laid before people. The problem we have is you have two camps, obviously, in science. You have the its globe and the its flat group. The problem is most people don't understand what the scientific method is and how it works. What are you calling actual scientific proof? Because there's plenty out there. Yeah, it's just cognitive dissonance. Mm, I don't know. You're wrong. There is no scientific flat earth proof. Nathan, you don't think there's scientific evidence of the Earth being flat? No, there can't be. So, f f the Earth is flat, right? That's not a cause and effect relationship. Okay, so you're an, the scientific method is only for cause and effect from your perspective. No, that's what it is. Not from his perspective. That's what it is. Is it? Is, are you of the opinion that experiment is absolutely crucial? That is the quintessential tenet of the scientific method. Yes or no? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Here's my next question. What are the three constituent parts of the scientific experiment? Hypothesis, uh, the variable, and then testing it. Hypothesis is not a part of the scientific experiment. It's done before that. So I'm going to ask you one more time. I'm going to be real clear. Give me the three constituent parts of a scientific experiment okay let's skip this and just tell me what they are that's what see that what that's what the problem is here because if you knew what the scientific method was you definitely know what the three constituent parts of a scientific experiment is and you're trying to lecture us on what the scientific method is do you see the problem there <sighs> Yeah, it is frustrating, isn't it? Yeah, so I, 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 I've on. taught a whole so class we, on, or I teach a class on the scientific method, bud. So I understand. Oh, okay. I just well, get what do you to, teach it to? Romper point. room? Romper room? Is this who you teach it to? Hang on a sec. If you teach this shit and you don't know this shit, how is it you're teaching this shit? See, and this is, this is a perfect example why unstudied people should not teach scripture says to study to show yourself approved these guys are not studied they they're they're throwing science they're throwing crap around like they know but they sound like freaking morons yeah but so, by, but according mm -hmm. to centrifugal force we should weigh two tons in order no, to stay here at all you can, you no. can do the math on that that's easy i've done the math on it i'm giving it to you you, you got you got a couple zeros off there i'm telling you no, I've I've done it in a in, in a centrifugal force calculator. I think I'm I'm well. You got you got a lot down. Hey, Mark. Mark. No. Mark. No. Um, have you ever measured? So I'm wrong because you said I'm wrong. No, no. Go check. Go. I, I encourage you to check I've, that again. I've done it many times, Mark. I know what I'm talking. The Earth is spinning at an angular rotation of once every 24 hours. That's incredible. Your, Mark. Your speed is 11,000 miles an hour. That's one and a half times the speed. No, it's 1,100. Actually, I'm on the centrifugal force calculator. Uh-huh. Okay, it, okay, so if you're on the centrifugal force calculator, put in 482.8 for your velocity and put in 6,371,000 uh, meters for your radius. No, dude. Radius is at least 8,000 miles at least. If the circumference mm. of the Earth is 24,000 miles... Your, your, your radius would have to be at least... Uh, JM, the circumference, the diameter of the Earth is the circumference times, or is, is pi times the diameter, not the radius. It's 3,958 miles. The circumference of the Earth is 24,000 mm -hmm. miles, approximately. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The radius of the Earth would not be 3.9. Yes, it would. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Do get the radius of the Earth and divide it you by pi. Really, 
Hold on, hold on. Get the radius or get the circumference of the earth and divide it by pi. And tell me what number you have. Hold on. Right. Twenty five thousand divided by pi. Yeah. Essentially. We're just gonna round it off to twenty five thousand. Uh, 3.5. 7,142. 7,142. Yeah, 25 divided by 5. You, well, hold on. What, what did you divide it by? No, 3.75. What is it? Pi is 3.75. It's 3.14159. I would just get a, <clears throat> if you have a calculator on your computer, it'd probably be easier, so that way you can just input the numbers. But here, let me, let me tell you, here. No, I'll, I, no, 7,900. 7,000, so, okay. Yeah, uh, that, JM, that's the diameter, not the radius. Now divide that by two to get the radius. How about we? How about we do this? I'm going to give you some simple, some very, very simple examples. At the equator, the curvature of the Earth is eight inches times miles squared. However, they say nine miles. Hold okay, on. go ahead. It doesn't Why even matter. Miles, right. Doesn't even. Hold, let me finish my point, please, before you rudely interrupt me. Thank you. But if the more I go towards the North Pole. The curvature increases. So the mathematical equation of 8 inches times miles squared is only good at the equator. Um, JM, uh, I'm not following. I got to disagree with you here, too. It's a ball. It curves the same in every direction, dude. I don't know where you're Actually, you're, it's, a little, I'm, it's I'm a little wider in the equator here. If I'm flying over, if I'm flying over the 30th meridian, the curve is is greater than when I'm at the equator. So you've done this. You find through the meridian. I don't need to do it. You oh, can okay. So you're just talking. You just can, rhetoric. Okay. No, 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 no. You can look at a ball and tell the curvature is greater the closer you get to the poles. I disagree with everything JM's saying right now. I've never heard this argument. 